Because they were, quote, disabled by mental illness, okay? And how that has changed over this time of revolution. Now, generally when you get a medical advance, the burden. I found it a really stimulating event. Uh, I had taken an interest in what um, Robert Whittaker had been doing uh, by looking at his websites and uh, contributed to them uh, articles to his, his the ones called Mad in America, which is the same as the, uh, the book title. The other thing I found interesting was his um, research into what's happened in Northern Finland and how that has uh, changed the way in which they treat patients and they, they, they're not over medicating people and they're finding that people can recover a lot quicker. I think that the strongest measures that came across was that if you intervene uh, with medication you seem to end up with a chronic illness that lasts a lifetime whereas if you just zap it temporarily with medication then um, the person actually recovers from that episode and often goes on to lead a very productive life. Well, it was really, really great. It's actually opened up a lot of uh, food for thought. Uh, I think Bob uh, Whitaker was a tremendous speaker and he's not scared to actually address issues which a lot of people tend to put under the carpet. And I think it's important to address these issues because a lot of people are suffering, on, you know, maybe through Ill, Ill practices and basically these people are not being allowed to progress in life. So I think people at Bob are very, very important to be around as advocacies to help folk really get to the issue of mental health and recovery. But I don't consider myself an evangelist at all. It's not my role. What I really consider myself is uh, in a traditional role of a journalist. I've gone through the documents and I'm presenting a story, a documented story, and I'm just trying to make this science known, this history of science known, that sort of belies what we what we think we know to be true. So I, I really say to the audiences, you have to be the evangelist, here's the information, you decide what you want to do with it. There is a lot of resistance among the psychiatric community to, it's not just the message, it's the information in the books. And I, and I really think what's so threatening is it's, it's their information, in other words, it's their studies. And again, I'm just like the uh, person holding up, you know, it's the king has no clothes a bit. I'm just saying, here's what your studies show and maybe you need to respond to it. The, I will say this, so psychiatrists generally won't come to a talk like this. It's the same in the United States, okay? So if I'm giving a general community talk, there'll maybe be one or two psychiatrists there. But what's happening in the United States now is I'm getting increasingly invited to give talks to psychiatric groups. In other words, psychiatrists, groups of psychiatrists, at medical schools, at conferences. And what happens is, if they can, in those forums, where it's this, they're not out in public, so to speak. It seems to be that more psychiatrists are willing to hear these things, discuss what it means. But to come to public forums, I just think they find it, uh, whether too threatening, I'm not sure. Uh, they can go to madinamerica.com, all lowercase. So M-A-D-I-N-A-M-E-R-I-C-A.com, which is the title of my first book, Mad in America. I do think that Bob Whitaker has something that needs to, to be listened to. And I had heard about him, it must be a year, 18 months ago, and about his book, Anatomy of an Epidemic, and went over in February to Ireland to meet Bob, and I was hoping that I could bring him then to Scotland. But I do think that what Bob says about the long-term use of psychotropic drugs uh, producing chronicity, I think there is something in that. And I think it's, it needs to be considered that um, sometimes the drugs can do more harm than good. But as Bob said, there is resistance by the pharmaceutical companies and by psychiatry. And I would think even when you think of uh, our event today, we haven't had any psychiatrists coming to this event to talk about it. But I suppose if they're used to a model whereby they prescribe medication, because this is mostly what psychiatrists do, you know, they won't want to hear this and they won't be in agreement, I don't think, with this message that we need to look at alternatives. Mm -hmm.